you. We've been on the air since March of 2009. You know, we're the longest-running business podcast in beautiful Orange County, California, broadcasting from the studios of octalkradio.net. Every year, thousands of companies waste tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands of dollars responding to nuisance lawsuits under California Prop 65 and, more recently, violations of the ADA for websites. And now, consumer privacy violations under the European Union's GDPR and California's new CCPA. Virtually all these companies waste time, resources, and money trying to comply with these ever-changing regulatory burdens. Compliance datalytics exists to solve both these problems at a low fixed cost for regulatory compliance and to help their clients to proactively manage the litigation risk. That's why I've invited the managing partner, Bill Fowler, to come on to the radio show and talk a little bit more about his company and how they help clients. Bill, welcome to Critical Mass Radio Show. Thank you so much, Rick. It's a pleasure to be here. It's obviously great to have you here, my friend. I've known Bill for years, and I've been excited to have him on the show since we started talking about having him as a guest. Let's let's have you tell us a l- I read the open, but tell us a little bit more about the firm. What makes you unique and why you even started the firm to deal with these issues, my friend? So I'm going to do that backwards. Uh, Why did we even start this business? Uh, I'm a minority owner of a manufacturing company. I've also been involved in a number of businesses over the years, and every year we get to deal with new and more interesting compliance regulations. And particularly galling, quite frankly, are the ones where you can be sued by a bounty hunter. What's a bounty hunter? Bounty hunter is one of those lawyers and their client, if in case they have a client, where they go around looking for something that you've missed or not dotted the I or crossed the T for which they can send you a notice, pull you into court, and basically wrangle a settlement out of you. Mm -hmm. The bad news is um, a lot of statutes, especially in the state of California, are enforced by these bounty hunter regulations. So as a result of experiencing this this myself, along with my partners, we recognize this is only getting worse. As you mentioned from the opening, there not only is California's Prop 65, which goes back to 1986, uh, but more recently the courts have found that the Americans with Disabilities Act applies to virtual premise, like your website or your app where you sell or market products. Wow. And now California has followed the, the European Union uh, by creating the California Consumer Protection Act, mm-hmm. which means that you have to take very careful care of your consumer data, provide them all the requisite notices. And if you don't, once again, you can be sued by someone who goes on your website, observes that you're not dotting the I's and crosses the T's, And not only are you being sued, but you're in settlement conversations. It's a per se violation. Hmm. Out of all of that, we realize that, yes, there's a business opportunity here, and it's one where we can serve our clients by helping them manage these type of risks and proactively comply with this kind of regulation and do so in a way that actually enhances their business. Well, that's interesting. I I, – I was curious about the company's name, too, because I recognize compliance, but I don't recognize Datalytics necessarily. The two together make a great-sounding name, but what is that? So Datalytics was a contraction that we more or less invented, although after we did it, we started looking more online because we wanted to get the domain and all those things. And we found that some other people were thinking along the same idea, which is basically everyone uses the term big data these days. Right. So big data, we're capturing all of this information. The question is, what do we do with it? Well, that's the analytics part. Okay. So if we combine data and analytics, we get datalytics, and it really means creating an expert system by which you look at the data. In our case, we've looked at every case involving Prop 65 back to 1990. Hmm. And we use analytics based on our personal experience as general counsel for firms to go back and see what is the behavior? What are the chemicals they're looking at? For example, downstairs in this building, you have Phil's Coffee. Yes, we do. On the door of Phil's Coffee is a sign that says the state of California <laughs> has determined that. So that Prop 65 warning, is that what that is? right there oh on my the door. God. That's a Prop 65 warning. And it says that you can uh, either get cancer or burn birth defects potentially from chemicals present at Phil's Coffee. Wow. Now, whether that's true or not is a different story, but the bottom line is failure to have that sign in the window could open them to litigation from one of these plaintiff firms. 
So we determined that by looking at the cases, we can figure out who they're going after. Now, interestingly enough, acrylamide, which is the naturally occurring substance when you roast coffee beans, uh, is present in virtually any cooked food. So you saw a whole spate of cases a few years ago going after Starbucks, duh. Mm -hmm. uh, but all the other coffee grinders could be a Pete's or it could be a one-stop shop you know, yeah, store like Phil's downstairs. Right. Yeah. And so it sounds like, you know, I, I love to understand where you guys are focusing your business. You know, we say, you know, what's your firm's most success, sex, successful niche? But it, unfortunately, it sounds like there are many, many companies that need to be aware of the Prop 65 regulations, but also now... Everybody who has a website is ADA compliant. I mean, it, from your words, where are you focusing this firm? Where are the successful niches for you today, Bill? So our focus of market niches have been the automotive aftermarket. That means the companies that produce products so that you can customize your car, make it look better or run faster, yeah. or do those sort of things. Why? Because I've been involved in that marketplace for 30 years. Uh, we've also focused on the beer, wine, and spirits industry. And as you know from knowing me in years past, I've produced documentary films, mm -hmm. uh, Psalm, Psalm of the Bottle, et cetera, in that space. So I have a natural affinity for and know a lot of people in that space. And then finally, one of my partners was very involved in the fashion and fashion merchandising industry. And it so happens that some of the largest amount of activity in the Prop 65 space has involved fashion and online merchandising and marketing. Wow. I wouldn't have seen that. I mean, I wouldn't have thought of those. I could see the beer and wine and maybe the aftermarket, but that's that's interesting that it's in the retail space as well. In within those markets, is um, I imagine the larger companies have their own law firm or legal team or something, and then the smaller ones maybe. So wh within those categories, where are you looking? Where do you see people valuing what you can do for them and how you help them to be compliant? So you're right. The big firms have multiple outside counsel. That's one of the things I used to do when I mm -hmm. was at Cisco Systems was manage outside panel firms. Once you get below that level, when something comes up like these regulatory compliance issue, you're now automatically looking for who has expertise. Does my regular firm have that or do I have to bring in other people? And if I want to be proactive and comply with these regulations, well, where do I find that expertise? Right. Now, I could pay a managing partner $1,000 an hour plus all the associated associates and spend a great deal of money mm -hmm. uh, trying to get up to speed on that. Or I could try and research it myself and send my staff off to do it. Both of those things suffer from three problems. They're expensive solutions. They take a long time because when you manage something internally, it gets distracted by other things. And therefore, you may never actually get the right solution in place timely. And then the lawsuit comes across the threshold and you're unprepared. And therefore, now you're on your back foot and you're going to have to start spending a lot of money with lawyers and figuring out what am I going to do to make this go away. And for Prop 65, 75% of the settlement is legal fees. Process that for a minute. Right? Yeah. I just did. Yeah. So they don't. the claims don't go to the harmed parties? They go to the... No. No. <laughs> well, that makes it even more attractive yeah. for these bounty hunters then. Yeah. The, the, the amount of fines that goes to the one bringing the party, they split that with the state. But 100% of the legal fees, which can be 75% of the settlement and typically are, wow. go to the plaintiff firms. Wow. So so there's, in the open, you know, I'm kind of looking at, there's, there's the issue of once you get hit with a claim, but then there's the, the proactive kind of management risk. I mean, the... the an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. My my assess my expectation is you're going to say that part of what you can do for people is for a low fixed cost help them to make sure they're compliant in advance. Kind of you must be seeing you've analyzed all the cases you sort of know where the soft spots are, right? We do. So that that must be part of your value is just in your DNA. You can off the top of your head or after a little bit of time give these people insight that their own legal counsel would have to do a lot of research to figure out. Yeah, our database allows us to look at a product set and say your risk is going to be phthalates, plasticizers, because you're selling purses that are made of plastic right. or whatever the element is. So we know what warnings should you have. We also know how should you post those warnings, what kind of combination of stickers, what do you need to do on your website without scaring everybody to death, right. and how do you best get that out there, and how do you communicate it both to your suppliers, which you have to do to make sure you know what to warn about, and how do you do your end user distributors and the retailers. The law was originally crafted to put the burden on retailers. 
In 2018, it was shifted to manufacturers. What did that do? That meant that if I have a company and I build something in Wisconsin, but it is sold or marketed into California, sure. I can now be dragged in front. And that not only includes U.S. businesses, Canadian, Mexican, world over. You're selling into California. And who doesn't want to sell in California? No one. It's right? the sixth largest economy in the world. Right. So, so that, 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 that gives you this. Why did they go away from the retail point of sale where the consumer is back upstream to the manufacturers? I would call it a, a confluence of forces. The retailers were tired of bearing the brunt of all these lawsuits, so they lobbied effectively okay. to the OEHHEA, which is the organizing <laughs> entity that manages this for the state. See the stuff he knows, ladies and gentlemen. We don't even know this. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even know that organization existed. You don't, but it has several thousand employees. Wow. Uh, secondly, um, the trial bar which actively supports enforcement of the laws, which, by the way, came out of, remember the Aaron Brockovich movie? Yes. This law got passed because people were concerned about toxic chemicals in water. Wow. And it seemed like a great idea to have a act that was passed by the referenda process to warn people about toxic chemicals in water and provide a means to go after the people who are doing the pollution. That small list of chemicals is now over a thousand wow. chemicals and covers virtually everything. So the other half of this was the toilet lawyer saying, we need to hold manufacturers responsible. What it did was expand the number of possible companies that can be sued exponentially. Right. And not domiciled in California. If you're dealing with the point of sale, you kind of know who the people are in California. Now, like you said, they're around the world. Exactly. Because everyone's selling product or would like to sell products into this in large California. market. All right. So um, the company is growing i wanted you on the show because you're you're seeing growth coming from this new idea which is needed in the marketplace so i'm wondering if you if you could is was there a decision that you and your other partners made early on that's allowed the company to recognize and be able to take advantage of the demand that's out there for your services yes and there's a couple of them okay uh, number one we wanted to reach a large number of potential clients that's scale uh, we also know that we're going to have difficulty getting the attention of Coca-Cola or something like that. But we can certainly get the attention of the members of the California Distilled Spirits Council or the Calistoga Growers Association or the, the uh, Specialty Equipment Manufacturers Association. So part of our key insight was to get to a large number of small and mid-sized companies and do that by working with their trade associations. Mm -hmm. One to many kind of a thing. Then, exactly. Right? Okay. So that so and that's allowed you to get in front of a bunch of prospective clients. I mean, when you talk to people in this niche, are they aware of they have to be aware of Prop 65 as a as a headline issue? Generally speaking, they're aware what many of them were not aware of. So if you were operating in California, like a winery in Napa, you already had some aware of this because you were a retailer, you're selling wine at your yeah. location. Yeah, you're in the ecosystem. You'd seen it. But if you're making whiskey in Kentucky, you didn't have to think about this before because it was only Bob's Liquor Barn right. that had to worry about that sort of thing. Now the tables have turned. So all those folks have to think about it. So we're working with the American Distilled Spirits Council, which consists of the biggest in the world, plus lots of little startups right. because it's become a big business. Yeah, it's a boutique kind of, it's, yeah, it's, it's like microbrewery now for whiskeys and distilled spirits, exactly. right? Exactly. So there was the rest of the 49 states, et cetera, that didn't know anything about this. And suddenly you're being dragged into it. Okay. It was actually through uh, our work with the beer, wine, and spirits industry that we originally became aware of ADA, Americans with Disabilities Act, for websites and apps because there were 50 lawsuits brought against wineries and distilleries in the Finger Lakes area and sure. others up in upstate New York. Florida and New York have been the most active for these kind of lawsuits. And it was the same thing. The court decided that, well, that's a premise for purpose of this. And now if you don't have a website that provides accommodation for people with various handicaps and disabilities, you can be held liable, just as if you had a, a business where you didn't have handicapped parking, bathrooms, or ramps. So we're talking with Bill Fowler. He is the managing partner. And um, 
I know you have a, you know, we talked about the datalytics engine that you guys have developed, and I think that is really powerful where you've invested the time to analyze these cases. I have to believe that's helped you to scale your business as well. Is that true? It absolutely has. And the reason is fairly simple. If someone sues you, you receive, in the case of Prop 65, you receive what's called a notice of violation. You're required under the statute to give someone 60-day notice that you're going to sue them. Okay, well, this just came out of nowhere for most people. So who is suing? What's going to happen? And again, I can go to my law firm and pay them a lot of money to research the issue and figure out what to do about it. But in the meantime, there was a 14-day time period where you can correct by putting warnings on things and doing putting that into the stream of commerce, and you could dramatically reduce the potential damages. Damages, by the way, are calculated at $2,500 per day per product in the stream of commerce. So the typical allegation is millions of damages right out of the gate. Wow. So it the Prop 65 it, uh, impact is huge when they moved from retail to manufacture. I can see that. But this... ADA for the website to me sounds like it's an even larger problem for companies because who doesn't have a website out there, right? Who doesn't have a website and increasingly who doesn't have an app? And now instead of actually having to drive by your place of business right. and observe that you're not ADA compliant, I can go to a website, uh, click on the website. Oh, it doesn't provide alternate text descriptions of the pictures or it won't read the website to me or provide a transcript. That's a violation of the ADA. Now we're in settlement talks when that lawsuit gets filed. So CEOs and business owners generally listen to Critical Mass Radio Show and podcasts, and I appreciate the fact that they've been listening loyal to some of them up to 10 years since we've been on the air. I mean, th this again, are, are, who are they going after for these? From what you've seen so far, is there a s certain size company or is everybody at risk or what is what would... Who should, you, who should be worried listening to Critical Mass Radio Show and podcast today? So the interesting thing about this is, and both of these that have emerged to date around Prop 65 under the new rules uh -huh. and the ADA for websites have seen some people going after giant slayers, the Coca-Colas of the world and all that. And there's a few of those. But by and large, the largest segment of these have been smaller businesses, oh, not geez. mom and pops, right. because you have to have 10 employees or more to be caught under Prop 65 or 15 employees or more under the ADA for websites. So they're going through middle market companies wow. because they're easier to ambush, quite frankly. They're right. often less prepared. Right. And they don't have the resources to figure out how to fight this aggressively. So they're looking for the quick and easy settlement. This is just like when I've had people on talking about cyber risk and cyber threat. Everybody thinks it's the targets of the world that are going to get hit. And what the experts tell you is, yeah, those guys get hit too. But it's generally middle market companies that they're really going after for all the same reasons that you just said, Bill. Exactly. So our target audience, especially for the ADA piece, unless you're a manufacturer, also then with greater than, you say, 10 employees? For, 10. Geez, that's not very big at all. No, it's not. So that, that really is all. You know, uh, my memory is just not that long ago, I started seeing Prop 65 warnings everywhere. You, you couldn't almost browse even on a website without getting hit with some. If you're going to like online purchases or something, you get presented with that. So it really became a part of my zeitgeist. I didn't appreciate how serious it was, but I thought, well, it's almost annoying. It's very annoying, and especially so because California standards for when chemical exposure, uh, in order to make people really safe, are typically – a thousand times less than the underlying science that says something can be a risk. Wow. So for some substances like lead, there is no what's called a safe harbor level. So mm -hmm. any amount of lead in something whatsoever, and you think lead doesn't work, where am I going to get lead? It's in leather. It's in little brass fittings. It's in all kinds of things. <laughs> um, it's in the handle of your purse. <laughs> Trace amounts. <laughs> Trace Jeez. amounts are there. And by failing to warn you've suddenly incurred potential liability. My goodness. So we're out of time, and I had so many more things I wanted to talk to you about. Maybe you can come back in the new year, and we can pick up where we left off. But hopefully we've at least raised people's awareness and sensitivity to these regulations and the risks associated with them. But if they would like to learn more, Bill, about you or compliance datalytics, how do they find you online? Pretty straightforward. We're at www.compliancedatalytics, all one word, dot com. So I'm going to ask you to spell datalytics just for my... D-A-T-A-L-Y-T-I-C-S. 
Well, I knew this was going to be kind of a tour de force interview because of the depth and breadth of the issues that we're dealing with. Thank you for being generous with your time and coming and sharing a little bit about what you guys are doing to keep people out of trouble. It's my pleasure. I appreciate and it. it's our passion. Right? I appreciate And we didn't even mention that, well, we'll just save that for later, ladies. That's what we call a tease here in the business. And uh, we'll come back with Bill Fowler maybe in 2020 and talk more about this. If you are listening to us now, I want to thank you for listening to the live stream on octalkradio.net. Or if you picked us up as a podcast or a video videocast on YouTube, thank you for listening and watching our program. I'd also like to thank our engineer for today, none other than Mr. Paul Roberts, as well as our producers, without whom I could not do this show every week. They are Joan Park, Crystal Nunley, and just off camera to my right is our newest producer, Vanessa Holland, who's right in the middle of finals week at Cal State Fullerton, but she's here to support the show. If you'd like to connect with me, I'd say let's do it on LinkedIn. I'm Richard Franzi, F-R-A-N-Z-I. And until our next show, I hope all of your business decisions will move your company in a positive direction.